the way it went was I looked at them and I inked them up. And if you, if you looked at the idea that they all came apart and they had this mirror image of each other, they were like Rorschach. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. And they just sort of unfolded. So this one is the opposite of that. Mm -hmm. So the word opposite came into my head. And I said, gee, opposites. And then, then I don't know how. I mean, I can't really explain how, of all things in existence, Aesop's fables jumped into my head. <laughs> I did not think about it. I didn't plan on it. It just came. And it jumped into my head. And I, and I said, yes. And it's such a great, it, it just, it thrilled me. And uh, someone asked me earlier about surprise. Who was it that was asking me about the word surprise? It was me. That's right. Pauline asked me, you know, were you surprised? And I really like the question, too, because were you surprised when this all happened? I had to think about it in a sense, and I surprised no, because I had a good sense of what it would look like once the images were inked up and paper was placed upon and cranked through the press. I knew what it would look like, kind of. But what really was a feeling more than surprise was excitement. The excitement that came and the, the unveiling of that piece of paper was, was incredible. Mm -hmm. So this is what happened. They all developed names, like the grasshopper and the ant and the hare and the tortoise and the frog and the ox and all these kind of fabled characters, you know. And, they, and, they, and they, they sort of resonated. Not that I was trying to do an ox or a frog, because that would be sort of, well, it would be sort of pushing the boundaries and not making much to the imagination, I think. But so I, I did it with the idea of being pure in the sense of abstract and whatever happened. So what really happened was something that surprised me because while I was working on it, I got a telephone call from a place called the Adler Gallery who rejected me years ago. They didn't want me to be in their place. And they said, would you be interested in showing with us? And I said, I thought you didn't want me. And said, oh, no, we like you. And I said, what about Aaron somebody? Well, he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's no longer with us. And I said, no, 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 no. So, uh, okay, yeah, so anyway, so they said, well, what's your show? And I said, OK. Well, That's how to be said, successful. Well, perfect show. Outlive them all. A, a whole series of black and white. And you know what they said? Don't you have any color? <laughs> <laughs> such a typical response to, you know, printmakers because printmakers are very black and white oriented with graphic, right? So I said, look, it's black and white. Don't you have any color? And it went on and on, back and forth, and I said, okay, yeah. And so I had two paintings, and those of you that came to the, to the house last night yeah. and saw in the gallery the big red painting, mm -hmm. yeah. and you were in the house and saw the big painting in mm -hmm. the well, those were flanked both sides mm. of the show. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. they really kind of... Oh, nice. Nice. So Very all nice. in all, we don't have the whole show here. Oh. Mm -hmm. This is only six of the 11 sets. So if we had the 11 sets, it would go probably down to the <laughs> guard with the thing on her. Oh, no, no, but this uh, is her show thing. Can't tell. But anyway, it, it would be... Um, that's how long it is. It's a pretty, pretty big show. So how long did you work on it? Well, here's the interesting thing. I didn't do an awful lot of work on it. Uh, I took, uh, I took a tool. I made my own tool with a, an auger, an auger bit. Yeah. And I took a, a broomstick and cut it, I drilled a hole in it, and I pounded that auger bit into it, and I sharpened it up. So I had an a tool that I could hold with both hands and sort of scribe into it. And, with, and you can see on one there's more horizontal scribes oh, so and the other one has more vertical. So each pair, I differentiated them by putting vertical and horizontal, which are opposites. Right. Like opposite of horizontal and vertical. Uh, 
Now, I never really thought of it that way until I did it. I mean, who thinks of what's opposite of a horizontal? You don't ever think that. You think of black, white, but not horizontal or vertical as well. But anyway, that's the way that kind of evolved. The other thing that came in, it was, I wanted to put another element into it, because nature did all of this work. Nature was really my partner. Nature created all that beautiful black. I had nothing to do with that black, nothing. It created all the, this other the subtle structure. No, not the gray, but all these other little kinds of things. And I said, okay, but now I gotta do something too besides the lines. And I created something called the salt etch. The salt etch was developed by Nick Semenov. <coughs> Nick Semenov was the honored artist in the exhibition yesterday. He had a blue piece with a big sort of sunburst and thing. <coughs> well, that he developed the salt etch, which if you work with zinc, you mm -hmm. can take root killer, which is copper sulfate, and salt, water, mix it up, and basically paint it on there. So the grays were painted on with that salt etch. So that sort of gave it the, the, uh, the my own DNA into the work, yeah, so to say. Sure. So this yeah. has nothing to do with solar plate. Yeah, we noticed. Yeah. Okay. So it, it really threw a lot of people for a loop because, yeah. you know, it's interesting once, you, once there's a label attached to something, mm -hmm. someone, mm -hmm. people look for that more, right? They want to look more into the person and say, well, where is this? Well, it's not here. It's someplace else. And it doesn't have to be there. So the big title could probably be a creator of something or a discoverer of something because that's probably more important than a solar plate guy mm -hmm. right? Right. or a printmaker right. Right? or even an artist. Mm -hmm. So we could just like to say we discover things, mm -hmm. we create things. Mm -hmm. So you said that was copper sulfate? And salt? Copper sulfate copper and, and water uh -huh. and salt. Mm -hmm. uh, copper sulfate and uh, salt. 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 Okay. But it's still science and art discovery. I mean, it's, it's all science and art. Right. Yeah, what kind of ink was salt? The ink I used in this was oil based ink. It was oil based ink. Yeah, it just has a little richer quality. Dan, I was wondering, could you addition these? I mean, are they set now, matrix set? Yeah. Yeah, I actually did. Uh, I wish I would have brought the other ones with me. Um, the, the second series of this, which I'm working on now, uh, they're not addition, but they're individual works with color. Oh, wow. But I mean, the, the plate is consistent, like it won't deteriorate. I don't know. Oh. <laughs> I don't know at all, but I mean, and I don't care. Yeah, no. I mean, it's not something that. Right, it's part of the process. To date, I think I've sold about uh, seven of them. Eight, but it's not what's you know of the 22 works. Mm -hmm. So one of the other things that occurred to me while I was doing it was the number. So 11 sets make 22 pieces. So I said, hmm, 11, 22. I wonder if they mean anything. And I looked up in the number situation. What are they? Numerology, they in are very numerology, significant. And what do they mean? <laughs> I don't know. Anybody know? <laughs> they are called the master numbers. Oh, that's uh, yeah. The master numbers. Now, I didn't know what that meant, but now I know what it means. What does it mean? If you use the numbers 11 and 22 and 33, mm -hmm. you have good luck. Oh, okay. <laughs> if you use it, but it, here's the catch. <laughs> You have to use it without planning on it. Oh. If you plan on using 11, 22, it's not going to mean anything. So if you do it, you know, and you know, things come along. Right? So those of you that found my address last night and you noticed it was not easy to read anywhere, so the numbers were 1649, well, it's written somewhere else in, in my house. And anybody happen yeah, to know? I saw it. it? Yeah, yeah. I saw it. Yeah. Yeah. Fire helmet. On my father's fire helmet oh, yeah. from New York City when he was a fireman oh. in New York. That was the numbers on his helmet. I wonder what that was from. Unplanned. Uh, <laughs> really unplanned. It's 
stress. Uh, it's was how you know, so yeah. there are a lot of little things in life that come that way that are sort of beautiful when it happens, and you say, "Wow, how does this all come together?" Yeah. It's really kind Serendipity. of amazing, right? Yes. You're in the Good. matrix. Hmm? You're, in the, you're in the matrix. <laughs> in the matrix. Okay. This is um, wonderful. In the group. So this is this is what the other nice thing about it. After it was in the Adler oh, Gallery. Yeah. It went to Allentown, Pennsylvania. Mm. It went to Columbia, Maryland. Oh, wow. It went to Greenville, South Carolina. Mm. It went to Eastern Pennsylvania, and now here. Mm. This is since January. Wow. Never in my life Yay. has anything had. Eric Fischel said to me, it sounds like your show got legs. <laughs> Time. But the most important thing is the excitement and the fun. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The discovery. How about the, the discovery? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. yeah. And the I'm curious. I'm and, 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 like did you ever, uh, as a printmaker, I, I was thinking, did you ever think about burnishing, burnishing into them? Oh, yeah. And then, because I, I, I'm looking at these beautiful things that are happening down here. Oh, um, did yeah. that, is that the result? Of well, you going back into it? Actually, it's a good question, and I like burnishing and scraping. If you look at the big print in the show at the parish, it's mm -hmm. called Fairly Squarely, you'll see some burnishing in there. Okay. Oh, you mean at the On the solar end. plate. Burnishing mm -hmm. on the solar plate. That's Southampton. That's Southampton, right. Yeah. So, That's burnishing is a great really? printmaker tool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I so, I, what I did was I used a little... I think in I, here. No, no, not, no in here. not in here. In the one in Southampton. Oh, okay. okay. The big piece of the wall that has burnishing in it. You'll see some subtleties going on there that could not have been done any other way. So those were just for a result of just you inked up what was there. This is all nature. Wow, that's amazing. That's all nature. It's like Except this the is nature. This is not yeah. nature. Okay, that's your that's your that's etch, that's and then the scribe lines you had. Scribe lines are not okay. Do mm -hmm. you know about the? The ox and the frog. Yeah. You know about it? Well, this is Aesop had this uh, story. You know, he used, he was a slave. He was a Greek slave, but he told little children to behave themselves, and you know, and if you do things, you, it, it'll be good for you. So he told them about this frog who looked up at his father and he says, "What's that over there?" And he says, "That's an ox." He says, "Well, he's big." <laughs> no, he's not that big. Look, look at me. So his father goes like this, see, see how big I am? He said, well, Dad, you know, that ox is still a little bit bigger than you. So he says, yeah, just watch this. And he goes, and he makes himself bigger, right? And he says, how about that? And he says, well, that ox is still a lot bigger. And he says, well, just watch this. And he goes like this, and he blows himself all the way up. <laughs> so the moral of the story is be happy with what you are. <laughs> 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 So that was a right? <laughs> so I like that story. <laughs> and it's also fun to see people in telling this story. <laughs> because we all go back to our childhood and listen to stories that, you know, we remember. And if you remember that or not. But anyway, it's fun to listen to stories, right? I remember those. Yeah. Especially when you have a good storyteller. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dan. So enjoy the rest of the oh, one more thing I'll say. On the back side of this wall right here is the woman who chose me. The way this, this show works was it's called Artists Choose Artists. And for years and years and years I was rejected. Every time I tried to, this is really important to know. Every time I tried to get into the show I was rejected. My ex-wife got in. I don't know. <laughs> So anyway, she got in and, and I didn't get in and my next door neighbor was the judge, and, uh, Alice Aycock, and so she drew in, because they were friends, and so uh, I didn't get in. And so I tried the next year, next year, and you know, it just didn't happen. This year, Jill Moser called up and she said, could I see your work? And I really didn't know her. Uh, I didn't even, didn't even know her name, uh, actually. And then she, I said, sure. 
So she came over and she said, just to let you know, I'm looking at everybody's work for the artist who's artist, and uh, I'd like to see your work, but don't get your hopes up, because <laughs> I'm looking at a lot of people's work. And I said, oh, thank you, I've never gotten this far. <laughs> what do you mean? You know, so, and we spoke a little bit. But the whole thing that was really such fun was before she left the house, she made a solar plate print. Ah. <laughs> so, so she had that experience. And, and, I, I, and I, she said, this is not a bribe. <laughs> so it was real fun. And, and her so work is on the other side of the wall? Her floor. work is on the other side of the wall. Okay. okay. Wow. And uh, I can tell you a little about some of the other artists because I do know most of them in the show. Uh, this is Janet Golias. She is the assistant to Jack Youngerman. And, uh, and then there's also the this, this show, you know, both of these. You can turn up the volume too. It does have a more feeling. Yeah. Yeah. It also has a, a yeah. Justin Greenwald yeah. feeling too. Yeah. He's here too. Yeah. Somewhere. It's Justin. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay. How about the woman who Thank you, Dan. That was great.